Hello everyone, today I have very special news about something that's going to change how a lot of businesses and individuals approach ads. It is an amazing container. I take my hat off to the people who came up with design, the idea, and who coded it in. It is truly for me, revolutionary idea. So without further ado, let's go right ahead and do it. First, I'm going to uh, SSH into my um, I'm going to SSH into my FreeNAS server. You don't have to do this. You can just go to console and type shell and you get the same prompt and then I'm going to do um, change directory to mount and then the volume name whatever volume name you gave your storage where your uh, doc containers are located so for me it's called R10 for you will be whatever you gave your storage the name so now that I'm located in this directory, I'm going to list all the folders, see them in files. And you see I already have folders for a lot of the containers that I have inside. So I'm going to create a new folder for my new container, which is mkdir. That's right, piehole. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's true. All right, so I have my Docker host running, and you have to have Docker host to be able to have containers on top of it. So let's go to FreeNAS, and let's actually do this. Scroll down to PyHole. Give it a name. my Docker host, make sure it says exposed ports. The TCP 53 port and the UDP are for DNS and the 80 port is for the web server to access it. So these must be enabled. And now we're gonna browse to your volume and uh, if you have created a folder like me, that's where your container path is going to be. And now the tricky part, the containers external IP. You probably want this to be the same as container uh, network. So I will set up a bridge network with this exact IP. The trick is you have to know what you know your subnet is. You have to know what free IP is in your subnet. Hopefully it's outside of your DHCP range. You could log into your firewall and or your router to see what IP range is. Or if you're on Windows, you can look it up through uh, CMD and type IP config, and it's going to tell you the basics of what subnet is. Most of the time, you're going to have generic subnet, something like 192.168.1, and then something between 1 and 254. Now, I know my subnet well, so I'm going to assign a static IP address of 242 because I know this IP is free. Now, the password for your container you can really name whatever you want. Now DNS option, so I want to uh, do 4.4.2.2 and then let's say 8.8.8.8, the Google DNS, a virtual host. Um, admin access can access on this uh, host name instead of the IP address if you want to give it, so just give it whatever you desire. And I'm going to set this to false. So I don't want IPv6. <laughs> I'm going to set this to bridged and I'm going to take this address and put it here as a static IP address for the network for the container and generate the MAC address really fast. Go in advanced, you could do this, you don't have to. I'm gonna make it interactive, I'm gonna make it auto start because I want it to be up. So 
save it. It's going to create a Docker container. And there it is. It's already up and running. So you can just go to the web UI, which will go straight to the IP address in the browser. You could literally just open up a new tab and type it in. Or you can click on that. And it takes you to admin. Now the trick is, now take your password, whatever your password is, and then go to login and do your password. And now you're the admin. And you have actually settings here that you can thoroughly drill down. Like I like open DNSS primary as well and as secondary as well. Let's save that. Okay. Query enabled, and then you can whitelist IPs that you don't want and the domains, etc. Now, why is this revolutionary? You might ask. <laughs> well, this can give you ability which I will demonstrate, to block advertisements completely on your entire network. So everything that comes in, so you don't have to touch anything on your devices. You don't have to install the ad blocker uh, on your cell phones, on your you know browsers, on your Macs. doesn't matter what you use, on your smart TVs, you name it. This will block advertisements from coming in in the first place. So... If you log into your router in your firewall and you point the DNS to be uh, this container, so you would point DNS server to be this, automatically it would block advertisements. So let me show you how this works and why is it so revolutionary. All right, so I'm going to go back to dashboard here. Naturally, this is just set up. Nothing is pointing to, well, it's taking my computer already a little bit. Um, let me actually go to networking here. And in your Windows, you could do the same thing or whatever your operating system, you could do the same thing. Navigate to your networking part. And you see my DNS server is pointing to my firewall. In this case, I am going to add, um, I could literally log into the firewall and point to DNS directly to this container. So all the DNS requests would go through this container or whatever your DHCP server is. You log into it and you point DNS for the server address of this pie hole. So I'm going to add 192.168.1.242, the IP address of this pie hole server. And I'm going to click Save. Close. And I'm going to uh, really fast restart networking. Now that that's done, I see my network establishing and I, I'm connected again. So what that's going to do for me is we're going to make sure that the, the primary DNS server is this container. You could do this literally by unplugging the either in a cable from your computer or disconnecting and connecting to Wi-Fi. Or in most, some cases, probably not even necessary. It's going to do it automatically. If you do this from the firewall, this is, you, know, you don't have to do any of this on your computer at all. This is just automatically done. So now that I have this open, I'm going to go to Google News and open some propaganda sites, whatever your choice for propaganda is. And we're going to see if we can see any ads. Let's go to tech. Tech always has a lot of ads on their sites. Uh, tech. The Verge. PC World. Let's see. Um, PC Mag. CNET. I'm sure a lot of these have billions of ads on their sites. Let's see if we can find any ads. I'm not seeing any ads. This is CNET. Usually you wouldn't be able to scroll down with all the ads. This is PC Mag. No ads. PC World. No ads. Verge. No ads. 
just the content from their site. These are not ads. Let's see, LA Times, no ads. Another terrible newspaper, let's see, no ads. Whatever your propaganda choice is, no ads, no ads. And no ads anywhere. Now let's go back here. Just in this little time, <laughs> This one host, it's just just me. I had nine requests. Do you see any of this? Quer how many queries? This is absolutely astonishing. So you can enjoy your content without absolutely any ads. Now tell me that is not just awesome. So guys, really, kudos to these guys. I am probably going to donate. And I hope if you like content sometimes that these people create, you can donate and support them on their Patreon sites as well. These guys are awesome. I take my hat off to them. And I'm just doing a little part of showing you how to configure this on your own free NAS and put it on your network. Guys, have a great day as always. and. And I'll see you on the channel again. Bye.